Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Alejandra, for joining us today. Our guest for today is Alejandra. And for those of you who never met her, and maybe I should go into a little bit of history into where and how we met before we jump into anything about your journey at the moment. Um, when I started out with Men for Inclusion a few years ago when I was at Cisco, um, we were trying to open a chapter in Latin America, and I was trying to like work with local Latin American leaders about bringing in speakers, bringing in thought leaders in that space. And Alejandra's name always came up. So we ended up finally connecting on WebEx at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> time. <laughs> uh, and lo and behold, we ended up talking for like, what, 90 minutes the first time. And then the second time, it was like another 90 minutes. And we could have gone on for like three hours on everything we uncovered. And right away, I thought, okay, Alejandra needs to be on the show. She needs to share her story. And that's why we are here. So welcome, Alejandra. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. It's such an honor to be part of this episode. And let's see how it goes. Thank okay, you so yeah, much I mean, for the invite. I, I know you're not shy. <laughs> <laughs> First and of all. <laughs> yeah, like I, I know we, we've talked about all sorts of things. So maybe we'll start with where it all started again, right? Which is formative years, like growing in Latin America, your cultural upbringing, and then how that cultural upbringing from your parents has also given you strength, right? Because I think that's a big piece of the way you show up day in and day out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it is a really nice story. It said at the end, everything starts with love, right? So um, I'm the first kid of um, my dad and my mom, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a moment where they separated, right? And I just uh, kept living with my mom, right? And my upbringing comes a lot from this uh, women influence, right? Mm. So very close to my mom, very yeah. close to my grandmother, right? So I saw a lot of um, women power, <laughs> like women power Strong influencing. Women. Definitely, definitely, definitely. No people that um, that know what to do and how to manage all this situation around um, cultural stuff, right? Because at that time, a divorced woman was probably not the best person in a sense of you're alone, you have two kids, what are you going to do, right? Mm. So mm. there's a lot of things that come around. And, 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 and as a kid, you see all that. And, and then it's like, you don't understand sometimes some of the things that are going on, right, around that. But a lot of strength around that. Um, my mom also suffered from a cancer. And, and I believe it's also important to mention here since we're in October, right? <laughs> so uh, she had breast cancer, breast cancer, and we went through pretty difficult times as well, right, on, on that part. And that also made me grow a little bit stronger, right, health-wise as well, when you start facing the, uh, those situations. And when you know that you're going to lose your mom, which is something that I'm not sure that we're ready for. Even if the nature tells you that, that your parents go <laughs> first or before you, it's just something that you're not prepared to deal with. I was... I 18 when we got that um information right like mom is sick and what are we going to do and then she passed away uh when i was turning 23 22 22 22 so it was it was hard it was hard right but, but yeah so most likely that that from from my, my upbringing in that sense plus the situation that i always knew that i like women <laughs> from very very young age i have to say i have to confess <laughs> yeah yeah and it i mean i would say the the story of your mother and the loss and the realization that, that there's a finite time with parents i mean is this is something we've discussed a few times before because i've, I've lost both my parents like about the same time you lost your mom, I lost my dad when I was twenty. When I, when I was twenty three, and and for the last five years of his life, I knew it was coming. It was just a matter of time. So it was like every call I got from India when I was here in the U.S. was, "Is this that call?" Yeah. yeah. So you have that little butterflies in your belly kind of moment that I always had. But I know we have spoken about that in the past. Um, Let me just bring something there right where you are bringing this, because 
I'd like to mention probably these three pillars that were around me during during that period of time because I I had a partner at that time, right? It was my first partner in life. I probably mm-hmm. last I think it was seven or eight years. This is like very very young age, yeah. and then I had my mom going through all this process that is also very difficult, right? Plus my other process around coming out, yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. So it's like everything happened probably within a year, right? Like wow. all this revolution that comes across. And, and I want to bring this out because we all are going through different processes and people don't really know where you're going to, right? And that's why we need to be kind to each other. Because again, okay. at that point, I lost a partner in the sense of like, we just broke up different situations there right then my mom got it sick getting getting sicker and she died like probably 10 months after my breakup thing right Mm. plus this question around are you sure that you were a lesbian and i'm like yes i am (laughs) right so questioning my identity losing my mother who was like a great like my probably main pillar there and then losing this effective uh, um, relationship that I had no? so it was a huge revolution over there and then you were like who do I go for help right what what can I do there like how can I manage this and I was very um, blessed to have the opportunity to go to therapy and I think mm-hmm. that is also important to mention because yeah. sometimes you need people that actually can help you walk through all the situations that you are going through right and, 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 and first of all, finding myself, who I really wanted to be, because mm. that was me, right? And from that, start accepting all the other situations that were coming around my new life with new adjustments, right? That I, yeah. that I would, be, would be having. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, I'll take a moment to process that, number one. <laughs> um, <laughs> We both come from cultures which are very conservative. And coming from a conservative culture and, and going out and saying, hey, I'm openly homosexual. Right? I'm a woman who loves women. Right? So talk me through that, the strength it took. You said there was a big, I mean, it was almost like a, a big change in your support structure because your mom, you lost your mom at the same time. Like, what happened then? How did you, I mean, I feel like there's a Phoenix Rising story there. <laughs> <laughs> there was. Right. So talk us through that story. Definitely, definitely. Are uh, There was. Um, moms usually know a lot more than we could actually imagine, agree. right? Completely agree. You can't blame mom. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So I remember, I clearly remember the day when my mom just, um, you know, we were in the living room and then she just told me, okay, so sit here, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah, what's up? So um, I've seen you that you just are hanging out with this girl all the time, right? And, and I'm just wondering, are you a lesbian? And I just said, yes, like immediately. I, I couldn't say anything else, like, yes. I'm not sure if my mom was actually expecting that quick response at the time. Or if she was actually expecting me to make a whole story around that and trying to avoid the situation. But it gladly went well, right, at that point. And she's like, okay. And at that moment, my mom was very open to share with me that she, she feared about my safety, right? Mm-hmm. And um, more than she questioning about what I wanted, she was more worried about how the world would see me and if I was going exactly and if I was going to be in a safe place to be myself because I knew I was a good person let me put it that way right no drugs no addictions um pretty kind to people right but sometimes um people don't see that right when you come out and you just say okay I am homosexual the first thing that comes to their mind is like danger (laughs) right? This is not okay. This is no natural. So get far from that, 
right mm-hmm. and, and 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 yeah so that 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 part was the was the main concern that my mom has and um she she offered help in that regards because she said okay you yes you need to understand yourself but i also need to understand what's going on so we both kind of need to go through therapy right to see how can I, how can i also help you right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it was it was really nice that 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 moment and as I mentioned before, it, it didn't last long because I lost her pretty, like pretty young. Probably it was just two years or, or or a year that we had the chance to go through that together. But she made sure that I was okay with me, right? And then um, because my my parents were divorced, I already said this part, so my dad didn't know, and it was not going to be an easy conversation. Because from my dad's side, there's another um, couple of my cousins that also have declared themselves uh, homosexuals. And I remember that time when I learned that one of them uh, was gay. It was not good. My dad's reaction was not good, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, I was very afraid that I could get the same from my dad, who Mm -hmm. I knew, right, that. He, he probably would explode, right, on that, on that thing. Um, but then I was smart enough, I believe, <laughs> to take it pretty um, wise. And I decided to travel to Canada, right? And um, I, I'm also mentioning this part because, as we were saying, with the cultural background, I was not also feeling completely safe to be myself in Mexico, mm. right? And, but I knew that in another country, which is Canada, I was pretty open, and I could have options to meet someone that I could share my life with. Being honest, that was my purpose to go there and to be myself, right? Yeah. So I um, think, yeah, last time we spoke, you said, I have traveled far and wide in search of acceptance. Yes. That is what you said. And I, I, and I <laughs> quoted quote that back to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for remembering that part. But but yeah, so at the end, what happened is that I met someone, and that's uh, like that person is my wife today, and I'm very very happy to, to to have her in my life. But I also decided that I was not going to go through the same story that I went before, which was not being open to myself about my sexuality, right, mm-hmm. and not recognizing the person that I love, right. So mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. no, this is not happening again. It's not it's not just for me. But also is to respect that other person that we are going to be sharing life, right? So I wrote a letter to my dad, <laughs> just like that. There was no, there was no uh, email the way that we know it right now. <laughs> so I just wrote a letter, right? And I told him, so that this is what is happening. I remember there were probably two pages or no, four pages, right? And um, I knew that it was going to take 15 days for him to get the letter. So I was preparing myself. We talk constantly, probably every two days. How are you doing? How's everything there? Yeah, yeah, lovey-dovey, you know. Mm -hmm. But then when the time came and when I knew that he was going to get the letter, I started to get nervous because it was just about time picking the phone and him telling me, so what's up? And that moment, I just knew he got the letter right yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just got the letter and um it was hard for him it was harder probably than i was suspecting uh mm. being the first child he had a lot of expectations on me right yeah, yeah. like traditional family probably lots of kids right like my girl and oh no i just changed that expectation so it hit him hard and then um, going back to the culture as a man how are you going to explain <laughs> yourself and everyone else that you were your daughter is lesbian right i think it was hard it was hard um but we took time i i came back to mexico two months probably after he got the letter okay. i learned from one of my dearest aunts that he didn't really have a good time he actually closed in <laughs> him in his room for a couple of weeks in to try to process the situation. And I learned from that that even if someone is ready to share that information, it's not always warranty. A warranty, sorry, 
that the person that is receiving the information is going to be as ready as you are. Yeah. And exactly there, it also comes empathy. Because with this love relationship between our relatives, whether it's your father, your mother, your grandmother, whoever it is that means a lot to you, they also need time to process that. And it's fair to give that time. If you're asking them to give you time to find yourself, it's just fair enough to let them have their own time to process the new information, right? That they're going to go through. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think last time we spoke too, we talked about everybody has to go through their own, how many other phases of processing what they get and have to deal with their own emotions, right? It's not, everybody can be on the same journey to processing any, anything, any information whatsoever, especially if it's very emotion driven. Uh, and if it's very foundational to the way they've always seen things. Mm -hmm. uh, like culturally I, mean, I know we're going to talk about another topic around like you know culturally we all define what men are supposed to do what are women supposed to do or it's like and I'm, I'm sure still I, mean, I haven't been to India in the last few years but I'm sure that there's a pride association with oh my first one is a male this is a female right and that's I know in my generation people are like oh I have a son right it's like it's that's kind of how I see it. it it's mm -hmm. there's lots of those parallels that you can draw, and and I've seen disappointments in, in parents' faces, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, and and also like vice versa, right? It's like they also seem like the most unexpected amount of acceptance as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And currently, we're such in a challenging time nowadays um, because there's a lot of stuff happening around this, um, let me call it this way, like sexual identity revolution, right? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. we are starting to break all these ideas that we have and that we've grown with. And, and, and there's a lot of confrontation. Yeah. And exactly right now is where I invite uh, each person that probably is listening to this to just listen, listen, don't, don't try to stop yourself and just listen what the other person is telling you, right? And in, uh, under this um, respectful environment, let's just agree that we're going to disagree, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that it's going to take us time to understand all the changes that we're going through, again, in general, because we're questioning our roots, we're questioning our culture. Yeah. And that is a pretty hard conversation to go through, yeah. right? But you don't need to be right or wrong. Just listen, listen and try to make the best of those conversations to actually, you know, like, re not relate, but um be, be together like have a nice relationship there yeah. whichever it is you know but it's we're going through a pretty <laughs> big revolution yeah and i and i think that the I, my my two cents there is seek to understand is what i usually tell people is like i'm always seeking to understand i think it's part of also a good allyship is seeking to understand mm -hmm. because i don't know what blind spots I have till somebody like smacks me on my head and tells me like dude like really like really dude like really mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I want somebody to be able to do that but to also to be able to do that you need to surround yourselves with people who will be raw and open and transparent with you mm -hmm. right and will tell you will call it as they see it right so you always yes. need to be surrounded by the very niche group of individuals that who will always who you can trust to keep it straight with you they like they'll I and mean, i know friends of mine will just call me and say Dinesh, that was not cool dude. like seriously right. like dude, not right. good and, and, and you know also what i'm listening to you and it, it just came to my mind this part of the privileges because we forget some of our privileges and when we actually are conscious about where we are, where we stand at from privileges, 
then we also can start understanding where that the other people is um, located, right? And then it's like, oh, okay, I I don't know what you're going through because my privilege is not allowing me to see that thing. But walk me through it. What is what you're living? Help me understand, right? And from there, then, as you said, we create this allyship. Because, yes, I will never understand what are you going through. But I'm willing to listen to you and see what is the best that I can do to make this world better. Because at the end, that, I think, it should be our ultimate goal. Make this world better. Completely agree. Um, You're talking about parents, and you're a parent now. And you've gone through the two conversations that are both very tough is what I would say. You've got to go tell your parents that, hey, I don't conform to normal what everybody considers normal, right? Now you have to do the same thing to your child, right? Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, it's interesting. <laughs> and the child has to like live through being in that, I mean, building a level of comfort around addressing the community, the society, and the way they perceive him because of the way they perceive you and your family and everything. Right? Talk us through that because that, yes. that is just, I remember when we spoke last time, I was like, I, I, would, I would shudder to have the conversation is basically <laughs> what I would say. Yeah, but please. Sure. So going back to that pretty lovely story, once my dad knew <laughs> that I was gay, right, lesbian, so it was time to come back to Mexico right? And I had to confront my dad, okay? So we went to a restaurant. We talked for, I'm telling you, probably five hours. I don't remember if the restaurant kicked us out or something because there was just a long conversation to happen. I didn't want that conversation to happen at home, being honest. I was also as strategic on that. Safety numbers, safety numbers. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Let's just go to a place where this is going to end at a point, right? And um. Yeah, we went through a lot of questions, this and that. And then um, he told me, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this. Mm-hmm. I just don't want your little sister to know. And I'm like, fine, mm-hmm. that's fair enough, right? I mean, it's okay. <laughs> because I knew at the end that if I was going to be myself, she was going to realize anyways, right? Yeah. It's just, yeah. but you decide that you want to have the conversation with her. I'm having the conversation with her. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So after that, a um, couple months later, uh, Pammy is her name. So she told me, so no, you know what? I want to go to Mexico. And I'm like, why? And I mean, it sounds good. She's, she's from Canada, right? Yeah. So uh, she's like, I want to go to Mexico. And I'm like, okay, fine. So now I need to tell me that. Guess what? That person she's is coming. coming. <laughs> yeah, she's coming. Dun, dun, dun. So, exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? So... <laughs> It's like probably presenting your first relationship boyfriend girlfriend to your parents, right? Yeah. So so nervous about that. And um, well, gladly they came along. They like really love each other. Um, okay, I lost my dad a couple of years ago, by the way. I also lost my dad. And uh, but I can definitely say that he did his best to understand what's what what was going on. He was he was being more a dad in that way. It's like okay. This is what I got, right? What, what can I make with this? And, and how am I gonna how, how am I gonna present to the new family, right? Because mm-hmm. at the end and later on, Tammy and I decided to get married, right? And to confirm a fa- family. Going back to this uh, first question that you said, and um, and yeah, we just got married and everything was perfectly lovely and fine. And then the question around are we having kids came mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. And uh, my wife was not really into it before she met me, being honest. <laughs> I mean, she, she had another plan for her life, probably. But um, we kind of came to this uh, situation where we were seeing other kids and with their families. And we we're like, yeah. why not? We, we can probably make it. We, we could do it, right? We could do it. So one day... In the highway, we just decided that, yes, it was going to be a good moment for us to go through through the process, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, because, of course, it's a, it's a different process, <laughs> right? It's not just like, oh, 
oh, one yeah. night it's, to go yeah. through not a different process, but but we decided to do that, and 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 we knew that we were bringing a little person to the world, and that person was going to depend on us, and there was a little bit of fear on yeah. how were we going to tell him that well him now we know his him yeah. <laughs> that he that 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 he has two moms in a country Mexico where at that time was not as common right yeah. so it comes all these questions around like when it comes the time to take him to the school how are we going to approach that part uh, yeah. how are we going to show up right like yes we are two proud mothers or one is the aunt right and the other is the mother so it's difficult it's not easy and then you go back to think on the safety of your kid because mm -hmm. as an adult you kind of learn to deal with uncomfortable questions but then how are you going to prepare your kid how we were going to prepare our kid to face all those things right mm -hmm. so he's seven years old now and uh we are very very proud of him and and, and the way that we have walked him through all uh, this mm -hmm. and we tell him that there are different families and that he's part of a different family and, and all families are different right mm -hmm. so we go from you're gonna find a family that is just mom dad or there's just they just have puppies right or or, or, or cats or yeah. just one kid and, and we just open his mind not to you know um have just this idea of one type of family right yeah. and yeah. that all families are different and that all families are okay to be because it's a personal decision to have right so it and, and as a parent it, it has been challenging but it has been pretty I feel relieved that I can be open to my kid and tell him what are the things that he may face. Mm. Not just that, but also be open to his own curiosity. Because as an adult, I just don't want to put ideas on him that mm -hmm. he probably doesn't even... Because they're kids. They're so... Innocent, right? Yeah. Innocent and open and they don't question more, right? It's but totally the agree. things that yes. we as adults put on them right so yeah we have preconceived notions as adults as to what's right what's wrong all of that right and that's mm -hmm. driven by everything around us the situations our circumstances our media whatever right mm -hmm. the the way we see and consume information oh, yeah. and we tend to like judge even before we speak to somebody mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. it's, it's literally how i see it Kids don't have that. Right? I, mean, I see, I mean, you know, we've spoken about it. My son is seven and he's like, he doesn't care who it is. He goes to a mall with me. He's like the, he's like the social butterfly, right? He's saying hi to yeah. random people. And I'm like, dude, like, and I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, okay, like, I don't know who that person is, but you're having like this full blown conversation with this person, right? Which, yes. which I love, right? It's, it's almost opening up my mind onto how we've built walls in our heads mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and where mm -hmm. things fit. But no, no, I just wanted to give that context too because the for you as a parent now, and I, I, I totally appreciate you kind of opening up to this, but I hope people who listen to this understand that this is okay, mm -hmm. which is why I want, to hear, want them to hear your story, is... People can be different and still be successful. People can be different and and speak differently and still be really good at what they do and be good parents and all of that, right? So don't put makeshift boxes in your head. Like I hate the term think outside the box, but don't put a box is what I would say. Don't create boxes and put people in there is mm -hmm. what I would say. But thank you so much and for sharing that story too. No, definitely. And, and, and let me share another thing. Currently, we as adults are responsible for the future generations. Mm -hmm. And every single thing we say, every single thing we do, they watch and mm -hmm. they repeat. So 
is like we are we have a core responsibility there right and I would be and, and I'm pretty open and, and people that know me and my family it's like First of all, respect to adults, that it's something that we need to keep, right? Mm -hmm. You may not agree with something that they are saying, but you know what? Just come to me and tell me what happened. And then we see, right? Or or we find a solution, but I'm not going to put, and I'm going to be brutally honest, my kid, (laughs) I'm not going to put my kid against a different opinion. I'm going to give him elements to understand why that person, right, is thinking or doing what they're doing. And of course, if it's something that he doesn't agree with, just, you know, take it away, mm-hmm. but don't be violent. Because, for example, that, that is one of the biggest fears yeah. that we probably face within the community or with the, with their, within the minorities. I'd call mm-hmm. minorities, but I don't think we're minorities yeah, anymore. So. But being honest, I don't think so. But let's yeah. let's keep it that way. Because exactly there is where we where we all lose when we don't give us the chance to understand and again listen. And sorry that I'm being very repetitive with listening, but it's very, very important, right? Because it's just like, okay, you don't agree, just go and decide to do something different, but don't go against that person because violence just creates more violence. And that is not something that that we need, right? So yeah, going back to that part, that is that is something that we that that we teach our kid. It's like you know what, just listen, and if you don't agree, just walk away. It's be safe. Yeah, be safe. <laughs> be safe, yeah. right? Um, I appreciate you giving me a lens and giving everybody who's listening a lens around just parenting and the challenges of parenting, right? With the unique circumstances you're in, right? You're you're and then I'm guessing there'll be more learnings that come through his growth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in his face, <laughs> different phases he'll go through. Uh, but but I'm, I'm thankful that you're sharing it with us because it's very helpful for people who are listening to understand that these are the challenges that we face in society mm-hmm. today, right? When mm-hmm. we don't conform. And something else, that's why we also, as an adult, need to be ready. And that's why there's a lot of information also around for us to consume in order to be prepared for those questions that the kids are going to bring. Because they are going to ask. They are going to ask, uh, Dad, why are those two guys holding hands, right? And we as, we as adults need to be prepared to provide not a judgment, but probably another question. What do you think, right? Mm. And then from what your kid comes back to you, like, oh, they're probably friends. Yeah, honey, they're probably friends, right? So just let them go by themselves with their innocence, right? Yeah. They, are, they are ready and willing to change the world. And I may sound aspirational, but it is true. They are, they are ready for that. We just need to pave a little bit of those um, that road for them to be able to take the best decision. But just let's not contaminate them there. Let's just yeah. be curious. Why do you think they are doing that, right? What are your thoughts around that? We will be very surprised with the answers they can come with. <laughs> right. It's even something as simple as usage of a word. Oh, I've yeah. Seen, like I've seen my son see something on TV or on YouTube or or I've used it on a call and use it. And I'm like, do you know what that means? Mm-hmm. And Adi will come back and be like, uh, I think it means that it'll be, it'll be most probably a mile away from what it actually means. And I'm like, okay, moving on. <laughs> right. and, and so it's, it's again, it, they, to your point, right, kids are sponges, they pick up a lot, right? And as they try to figure out their own barometer of what's right and what's wrong and all that stuff, the lesser we contaminate, the better. Yes. Yes. We need to give them that. <laughs> so we have spoken about so many big moments in your life already. But what are the biggest hurdles you faced? Now, you're fast forward, you're in corporate America today. You're very successful. Thank you. Right? You lead teams. You're a thought leader. In, around, in the DNI space, you lead AERO, 
uh, globally for Pride at Cisco. And lots of people look up to you to be, quote unquote, the, uh, the messiah of truth, right? To come in and say, <laughs> okay, this is potentially things that we could do differently. This is what we could do. And most of those things usually came from learnings mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So, and according to me, the best teachers are the worst situations. Mm -hmm. In my life, at least, my best learnings came from some of my worst points in my life. Right. So what were those biggest hurdles in life when you came to corporate America? And I know you mentioned like Cisco is very welcoming. It was a very, it was a breath of fresh air when you came in uh, and the interview opened to your, to your identity. Right. But what else was there? Right. What were the challenges there? I, I I would say that first of all the, the biggest hurdle it was within me right mm. because at the end I still had this concern that if being myself at work was going to be safe for me and probably mm. even question if it would if it would be an obstacle for my career right mm. because that is something that you sometimes question yourself or it's like yourself yeah. yeah, no. So um, I remember uh, that th there is um, an event within Cisco that is called uh, Women of Impact. And back in 2018, one of my, my I can call her a uh, friend, uh, Francesca, she came to me and told me, so Ale, we were thinking that if, if you would like to share your successful story, right? As a leader within Cisco, as woman, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, sounds good. Let me let me think through it. And then I came into the realization that it was probably the moment for me to share my whole self, <laughs> like my whole self, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that means. So I, I talked to her and I told her, so I thought about this one, like kind of a coming out, <laughs> formally coming out, right? But I was ready. I was ready and I was feeling confident that probably being myself was the right thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. And with the support that I had around. So I went to this event. I, I, I exposed uh, my timeline, not just professional <laughs> speaking, but also my personal life. And, and, and I think it was a, a pretty good success. And um, I'm very, very honored and, again, privileged to have that chance in that forum to, to, to express who I was. And for my own surprise, all that was very welcoming, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and it's like you're starting to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I consider myself that I was not an activist before 2018, being honest. I okay. consider myself that way. But then I have uh, this other, pr like, very close friend of mine, Eva, and she told me, what are you talking about? Of course you are an activist, right? You are. And the way that you show up, the way that you talk, so of course you are. And she kind of teased me a little bit around this idea of the, the community <laughs> thing that yeah. I was probably ready to do, but I didn't know I was ready. And, um, uh, yeah, we, we started the, the Pride ERO in Mexico. Uh, knowing that we probably would face challenges, but mm -hmm. that we were very um, committed to go through it. And I'm saying we because it was not me alone. It was another a couple of people that also joined to that effort. And for my surprise, a lot of the leadership that was within Cisco was also very up for it, right? And, and supporting and saying, yes, let, let's, let's do this little by little same thing you no know? yeah. you know that you are in a culture that that may be a huge impact right so how you position the pride concept and all that comes with it with um company that truly believes that you can be yourself right but then at the same time making this balance to not put in risk the people that wants to be themselves but also mm. the company, being honest, yeah. Yeah. because it's something that you also need to be thoughtful, right? How do you want to keep uh, going forward with all the initiatives or the ideas that, 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 that you have? So that happened back in 2018, lots of support, 
right? And, and that's why I'm very thankful with Cisco. I don't think I would have found at that time, right, a company that probably that, that would embrace myself the way it did and that I could start giving voice to people that didn't have one, right? And that people that probably is still there, not quite sure if it's safe or not coming mm. out. But all this work that we're doing is educating. Yeah. <laughs> educating, right? Agreed. To start to build safer places for people to be. Because it's really easy to say, oh, yeah, you can be yourself here. But in the day to day, is that really happening? And I'm talking in general, right? In the world. Yeah, yeah. It's very easy to say, but how do you commit and how do you actually um, do these actions? to provide those those safe spaces to people that they can actually be who they are, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, back to obstacles. Again, they were, but when you, or, or, or what I realized is when you have your purpose very clear, you find the way to make everyone come together mm -hmm. for that purpose. And it's going to take time. That is another thing that I really would like to be very transparent. It's not from that one day to another. It takes years, yeah. but little by little, little by little, you just build that part. And right, it's <laughs> what you can contribute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, no, I I appreciate the lens because um, I agree. This is a journey, not a destination. Uh, there is no end state. This is an ongoing state, and it's. We're solving for maybe multiple things while we, as activists, try to create safe spaces. Right? I mean, it's, it's it's not just hey, we're solving for diversity. Mm, yeah, no, like, <laughs> like okay, we can do maybe very inorganic things and get top talent that is very diverse into the company. Why would they stay? Mm -hmm. Depends. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm most probably poking the bear here. But, <laughs> but, but foundationally, if you don't create uh, a community, a culture where somebody who's who is representative of the different, let's say, whatever it might be, it's a very mm -hmm. big broad term feels comfortable to stay different, to voice different, mm -hmm. to be okay with that identity that they're different and still feel included, it ain't gonna work. Right, right, right. And you know what, now um, that I'm listening to what you're saying as well, you, you bring this um, diversity concept and that is also something that needs to be um, talk through because there are a lot of different different diversities mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, it's not just exactly it's not just the one that you externally see there are other differences that make us special and we are all in a, um we call it intersectionality right mm -hmm. you were not just um uh, latina <laughs> right in my case there are a lot of things that go through it, right? And when we understand that we all come from different backgrounds, different experiences, different cultures, different ways of seeing lives, and then we start accepting uh, or again, listening around that, we can actually be diverse and inclusive, mm. which is this other part, right? I understand where you're coming from. So let's, yeah. let's include all these different thoughts. You know? So. What can men do better? Okay. Three things. I love three in general. <laughs> three things that men can do better to be better allies uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Question your privileges. That would be my favorite one. <laughs> yeah. Question your privileges. Yeah. Right? Love that answer. Think, yeah. Think through what you can do that women cannot or transgender people cannot do, or mm -hmm. homosexual people cannot do. And from there, like you can start realizing that 
Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. in a privileged position. Right. Yeah. So that would be one. Um, the other one is be vulnerable. I can, I, I, I'm going to make a confession here. Sometimes I feel sorry for men in the sense of sometimes they are not allowed to feel and to be vulnerable. And that again, it's a cultural stuff that we carry on, right? So just give yourself permission to feel, give yourself permission to be more close to what feels right or wrong, right? What am I doing to actually make a difference, mm. right? I'm acting differently towards what, but be vulnerable. Give you permission to feel, yeah. right? Yeah. Not just think, feel. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, right? And on the third one, if you don't understand something, just ask. Make questions. Please don't assume, right? Ask respectfully. Yes, ask respectfully. Exactly. A little if, yeah, if you don't want to be exposed, right? Because that is something that has happened to me. And I'm, and I'm again, very privileged to be in that in, in this way. I have a friend. I'm not going to say his name, but I have a friend, <laughs> a very, very close friend to me. And I admire him so much because whenever he has a question, he comes to me. So, Ali. <laughs> what about this right and and i feel very happy for him because he's finding his safe place to come to us <laughs> let's put it this way to yeah. ask questions yeah. and i have seen him grow i'm telling you he is such a different person and i just see him more confident when he has to face a situation regarding lgbtq situations right he's more confident and he knows what to say or at least stand there, not just, not judge, sorry, and be curious and say, okay, do I have the answer? I'll go for it. I don't have the answer. Okay, just give me some time and I'll get back to you. So I love that part. It's something that I admire so much from him, right? Because if you see him, <laughs> it's, it's just like, you wouldn't think probably, right? Yeah, that he's yeah. that way, but he is. And he's making a change. I, I, I'm... I'm very, I don't know, proud of him, <laughs> just no. to say. Yeah, be curious. Ask questions. Okay. Respectfully. Now, all, all, all three, tremendously insightful. Uh, this is a new thing that I'm starting to do from this episode. So you're my guinea pig. Wow, yay! For this one. <laughs> so I know I should have prepared you perhaps for this one. Um, this is an ask a host question. So you get to ask me any question you want that okay. fit the context of everything we have spoken about, right? Okay. It's totally up to you. And <laughs> I will give you my very obviously unfiltered answer because I'm not prepared for what's going to come. Okay. So, so I'll pause there. <laughs> you can take your time. <laughs> no, I have it ready. Oh, I have oh, it ready. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Sorry. And I, I was not ready. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just for the audience to be sure we were, this is okay. a surprise for me. Okay. But here it comes. Okay. Shoot. You are, you are at home, right? Mm -hmm. Like, happily. And then um, your, your, your kid comes to you. Mm -hmm. And he tells you, Daddy, I think I like a boy mm -hmm. in my school. Mm hmm. I would like to hear <laughs> what Omesh is going to respond and say around that. Believe it or not, uh, uh, this, me and my wife have discussed what would happen if. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and my answer is going to sound so like, really, dude, like that was your answer. But I, I'll be upfront. And I said, um, so. The thought process behind the answer is maybe what I should say first before the answer. I, without the thought process, you wouldn't think much. Thought process was, if you were to be homosexual, let's say, mm -hmm. right? and just because you say you like a boy doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. to me, right? It's just like, like whatever, right? It is what it is, right? I'm not going to like double click on it 
it's a data point for what it's worth, right? I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to embrace my pragmatism as much as I can and say, hmm, okay. Noted. <laughs> Ack. <laughs> right? Ack. There you go. Like, how many times have we done that on, on chat, right? Ack. Ack. It's one of those Ack moments. But in my head, right off the bat, my brain went, when I, when my wife asked me this question, my brain went to, um, I need to create a safe space for him where he can thrive, mm -hmm. where he sees that that is okay. Right. And frankly, right off the bat, you know what my answer was? I live in San Jose. I was like, my first answer was a very snarky, sarcastic, <laughs> dull answer, but I'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> was, damn, I can't afford a house in Castro. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sarcastic. <laughs> right. And I was like, my wife was like, you're kidding. I was like, no, but I was like, I want him to be okay around people. And like, yeah. my brain went to the complete execution mode. Man, man, I got to earn more money. To, if he was, like, it just went into straight on. Like, it, it was beyond acceptance, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It immediately went into, okay. Okay. I need to get you into safe spaces. Right. We, which I think any logical parent in today's day and age would do, my, mm -hmm. my, my humble opinion. But again, you know me for long enough that yeah. that was my answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I'm just realizing right now that you actually answer or had the same concern as my mom. Yeah. She was just concerned. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of us as parents, that is our main concern. So, You're a provider, yeah. Yeah. So from that, let's do something to create better and safer spaces to all those kids yeah. that are just coming behind us and that they need us to be a better society for them, right? To keep them safe. And in some cases, to keep them alive, right? It's yeah. hard to say, but it's, it could be a life-threatening uh, situation. So we need to do something. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Um, hopefully that answer was what you <laughs> thought it was going to be. I love it. I love it. I love it. I have to say, I love it. <laughs> it's like, there's one of my moments of, oh, I'm just going to give you an image answer. Like, <laughs> I just hope you started that saving account for that. <laughs> I was like, in my head, I was like, I'm going to go straight into execution. <laughs> onward and upward. Right. That's literally <laughs> okay. where my brain went, right? Again, provider syndrome, right? Strong provider syndrome. Yeah. So we yeah, yeah. straight into that. But no, <laughs> I appreciate the question. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> it's all my love, my friend. <laughs> like, I appreciate the question. And, and I actually like this. This is the first attempt at this. And uh, I, I can officially say I'm sweating. Uh, <laughs> I hope I provided you a safe space to express yes. your <laughs> answer. <laughs> Yes. You know, I'm, I'm going to have like more of the guests do this because I feel like there's maybe things that you come up with as you talk to me as well. And as you talk to other hosts as well, that you'd always want to ask, but you never do. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it shouldn't be, this is not about, this is of course for me to showcase you and your journey and how all the learnings are, but there's something that maybe you learned in the last 60 minutes of the conversation. They could put me on the spot and I was like, well, might as well just go gift myself <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Right. And hopefully, I mean, to the people who are listening, they understood where I was coming from. But again, the goal is learning. Yeah. If you're listening to this, hopefully you're, it's at least seeding the thought that you need to widen the aperture of the way you think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in pretty much every sense of the word. Definitely. And if you allow me, I really would like Please. to thank you for all these things that you're doing. You have been such a gift in my life, I have to oh, say. Oh, thank you. And um, thank you for giving this spaces for, for us, for the people that you have interviewed, for being curious and for being such a kind person. People like you is people like make the difference. So thank you. Thank you very much for this, for this time, my friend. Deeply appreciated. Uh, my very snarky comment to that is brown don't blush but <laughs> <laughs> but 
but jokes apart, no, thank you for taking the time, uh, being vulnerable, being open, being transparent, being okay to go where most people feel uncomfortable to go because you're leading the way for others to feel comfortable to do it. And and more to come, right? I mean, if, if these things happen and if these things work, and I intend on continuing to do this on a regular basis, of course, as much as my life and my priorities will let me do that, this is definitely a priority which is why it came back on. We're doing it. That's wonderful, my friend. Thank you so much for this time.